Growing up exploring Alaska's ever-changing landscape inspires a lifetime of learning. That's why Alaska 529 is a proud sponsor of the Alaska Sea Life Center and focused on helping families take small steps now for their child's future education. To learn about the Alaska 529 plan, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, carefully read the plan disclosure document available at alaska529plan.com. Alaska 529. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. Everyone gather round, it's a time of day for Virtual Small Fry School. We can hardly wait. Make new ocean friends connect with old pals too. Let's learn about the sea, there's so much to do. La la small fry. La la small fry. La la small fry. La la small fry. Learn and have fun, cool creatures to meet. It's virtual small fry school. Go ahead and grab a seat. Hi everybody, welcome to Virtual Small Fry School here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. My name is Rebecca and I'm so excited you're here today. Uh, we will be hosting these live every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Alaska time, so make sure you join us next week as well. If you have any questions today, please go ahead and text them to the phone number provided in the description below. And then today I also have my friends Holly and Alex working with me. You may see them back there with the reflection of the light. Um, so because we're all working together, I am out on the floor right now, and so we are open to the public. We're wearing masks to be safe. So today, we are talking about plankton. And plankton are so cool. They're uh, drifting or sorry, floating plants and animals in the ocean. You can also find them in freshwater ecosystems. So there's plankton in this ocean all the time. We cannot see them with our eyes. Here's the kelp forest. There's also plankton in there. Yeah. And so there are two types of plankton. One, two. The first one is phytoplankton. And it, they're like tiny plants that just float in the water. Floating like that. Can everybody float with me? Take your arms out <laughs> and just float in the water. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> so um, phytoplankton are kind of like little plants. Um, and do you remember how plants make their food? That's right. So here are my tiny seeds that I showed you last week. I have wild lupines. And the seeds need soil because there's lots of nutrients in the soil. They need water to stay hydrated. And they need the sunlight because the sun's energy, the sun's energy is food for, um, for the plants. So I want to show you my plant baby. That same plant I just showed you in that video, I have it here with me today. Whoa, look everybody, I have a plant baby. And it's already sprouting and it's growing because I've been putting it by the sunlight by the window. And I've been, um, giving it water to stay hydrated, and it has lots of soil right there to be happy. Isn't that cool? So like I said, um, sorry, everybody. Like I said, plankton are kind of, phytoplankton are kind of like little plants because they also use, this is the phytoplankton. This is what they look like. They're so tiny. We cannot see them with our eyes. We need a microscope, big word, I know. But they're really cool. And um, they, they are like plants because they need that sunlight to make um, energy. The other type of plankton that we're going to talk about today are zooplankton. And those are tiny animals that drift in the water too. So plankton are animals that are not very, or, or plants that are not very strong swimmers. And they just get pushed around by the currents in the water. The zooplankton tend to be babies of Hermit crabs, for example. This is an adult hermit crab. And they can also be babies of sea stars. 
This is an adult true sea star that we have here at the center. So they can be small or they can be big like the jellies behind me. So these are moon jellies um, and they're really cool. How do we eat, friends? Do you remember how we eat? Yeah, we use our hands and our mouth to chew our food, right? So jellies have arms too. They're different than ours. The longer ones, they come out of the middle and the longer ones, they take the food, they take the plankton because they eat phytoplankton or any other plankton that's in the water and then they take it in their mouth, which is here in the middle. So I don't know if you can see it here a little with this one. Um, you probably can't, but this one you can see it's little, those right there, those are its oral arms. And then it'll take the food and put it in its mouth, kind of like we do. So I want us to go meet a friend of mine. We're gonna go behind the scenes and talk to him and learn a little more about moon jellies. Let's go. All right, everybody, we are back here behind the scenes. It's a little cold and it's a little loud because we have these pipes in here that bring the water from Resurrection Bay to the animals in the tanks here. We are here with a very special friend of mine and his name is Leo. And because we are behind the scenes and we are going to be together working, we're wearing masks. So, Leo. Hello, my name's Leo. And today I'll be your aquarist at the Alaska Sea Life Center. Um, so you might be wondering, what is an aquarist? So uh, here at the Alaska Sea Life Center, we have stellar sea lions. We have seals, we have ducks, we have gulls, and I take care of none of those. I actually take care of all the things little and swimming around like uh, snails and little fish, uh, giant Pacific octopus, and moon jellies. And so, Rebecca, I was just on my way to check out our moon jellies. Would you like to join me? Oh, yes, please. All our viewers want to go on a ride with you. Perfect. That's amazing. But first, in order to see the moon jellies, we have okay. to do the moon jelly dance. And it goes like this. Moon oh. jelly. Okay. Okay, Leo, I want all our viewers to uh -huh. do this with us. So okay. everybody, I want you to do it too. Ready? One, two, three. Moon Take your arms jelly. Off. Moon jelly. Okay, I think we're ready. So we're gonna go that way and go check out the moon jellies. Ready. All righty, we're making our way back up to the behind the scenes part of the jelly exhibit. It's really cool. Um, so from here, we have like a little bit different view from the uh, guest side. We get to look down into the jellyfish aquarium. And so your experience with jellies might be something like you're walking along the beach and you find a upside down jelly and you're, it's kind of like scary and you don't really know what's going on. That jelly actually did its job. So a jellyfish lives a very interesting and mysterious life that we don't get to see or experience because all of that happens deep underwater. So these things that we see and we call jellies, the things that kind of squish around, that's actually kind of like the mushroom to a fungus. And the mushroom kind of comes out of the ground and we see that and it lays its spores and it creates more mushrooms, but that's actually just a small part of the mushroom itself. And the majority of the mushroom is actually underground, just like that the moon jellies are kind of like the mushrooms to the fungus. And these guys are just kind of swimming around the water um, to kind of spread gametes, which is kind of confusing, but to dive into this realm of jellies, uh, you first have a newborn jelly that's just floating around in the ocean and it settles on the ground. And from there, it'll actually start growing it kind of like, um, almost like a sea anemone. And it starts growing on the ground and it'll just collect all the food that's floating around in the water. And once it gets enough water and the conditions are just right, they'll actually go through this new stage where they'll start strobulating. Now, if you can imagine this anemone started to stack on top of each other, kind of like a bunch of stack of plates, where each plate will actually break off of each other and float around like a plate in the ocean. And that's called strobulation. And so now it's floating around in the ocean and it kind of looks like a tiny snowflake. And the snowflake will slowly become a normal looking plate with uh, 
with stingers and tentacles around its, uh, around its side. And as it gets bigger and bigger, you'll start to realize that's what the normal moon jellies that we're familiar with. It'll start to look like that classic jellyfish. And once it becomes like a large adult jelly, then they'll release um, female and male gametes, kind of like eggs. And then once a egg gets fertilized, they will float away from the uh, jellyfish and turn into another baby version of that jelly, which will then settle onto the ground, grow into an enemy, become little plates, strobulate, and little jellies will float around and they mate and they settle to the ground and the cycle of life continues. So that's kind of like what it's like to be a jellyfish. And today we are looking at the adult jellies floating around and we're gonna help them feed. So they're kind of like, uh, there are passive uh, feeders that will just float around with the current and eat the things that are drifting around with them. So today we have brine shrimp. They're kind of like tiny little crustaceans. Um, when I was a kid, it used to be a big thing to uh, grow your own sea monkeys. And these are actually exactly the same. So if you look closely, you'll see tiny little sea monkeys all wiggling around and they're all gonna be floating around in the water column until they are caught by one of their tentacles and they'll be brought into their mouth which is in the center of their bell and uh, their oral arms will bring it in and they'll be ingested and then uh, you'll actually get to see the brine shrimp travel into their digestive system which is kind of like that four leaf clover design in the center of their bell So yeah, feeding these jellies are one big part of my job. Um, uh, aside from cleaning their habitats and making sure that they're all happy and healthy and checking them, uh, checking them and making sure that everything's okay. But uh, thank you so much for joining our program today. It's been a real pleasure. And I hope you guys learned a little bit about the mysterious lives that jellyfish live to this day. Right now, they're floating around the plates, jellyfish, strobulation right now. Pretty cool. Whoa, everybody, we just learned so much from Leo. Thank you so much, Leo, for having us yeah, back course. here and teaching us about the moon jellies. We're going to go back out to the exhibit so that we can see the moon jellies from the floor side. Hey, bye, Leo. Bye, Rebecca. Bye, everybody. Whoa, everybody, wasn't that fun? So um, I want to remind everyone, if you have any questions, please text that number below. Um, so that I can get your questions and answer them at the very end. So we're going to get started with our activity. Cool. So I have my plant baby here. So for our activity today, we're going to make a plankton. And I have uh, clay here, but you can use Play-Doh. I have sponges here. Um, you can use really either one of these things, whatever you have at home. If you have a sponge, with the help of your adult, you can cut it into different shapes. It's a little hard. I have some beans, some pipe cleaners, toothpicks, um, and popsicle sticks. So you can take your sponge and you can use your, uh, pop, uh, your toothpicks and put them in there and kind of make your own phytoplankton or your own plankton and get super creative. I'm going to take my clay and we're just going to make really fun shapes. So you can choose your favorite shape, maybe a circle or a triangle or a square or even a cube that's a little fancy. I could do. So my beans, I have them so that I can, you know, decorate it a little. Because we're making our own plankton. They're really cool. Some, some of the phytoplankton tend to be really uh, rigid, so really stiff. And so they don't move very much. They just float with the water. Then I'm going to use maybe, let's see, this one. What color is this? It's green. Yeah. We're just going to stick it in there. Ooh, 
I like that. Then we'll use the white one, stick it in there. How about we put some beans here at the bottom too? Awesome. Purple, is purple anyone's favorite color? Hi. And then we'll use red for a pop of color because you can never have too much color. Great. So why don't you go ahead and do this and also go ahead and send us your photo to, the, to, the, um, to text the phone number. Wow, because I really want to see what you guys created. So we have our moon jellies here. And uh, sometimes when, when they feed them, we can see the brine shrimp coming in, and then we can see those oral arms that they use to eat with. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. I have friends with me here today. I don't know if you guys can see them in the reflection. It's you guys. Welcome. <laughs> so. Does anybody have any questions, um, people texting, or if you guys have any questions, I just talked about plankton. Um, these are moon jellies. Yes. Do animals eat jellies? The question is, do animals eat jellies? Yes, animals um, like sea turtles really like to eat jellies. That's uh, sea turtles, that's some of their favorite food. I have another question. Yeah. Ooh, what animals eat plankton? Well, for one, our moon jellies like to eat plankton. Some fish, like sardines or anchovies, also like to eat plankton. And then even bigger animals that you would not think of also eat plankton, like blue whales. They eat krill, and krill tend to float our zooplankton and just get pushed around by the currents. Awesome. What type of jellies are in Alaska? So we have moon jellies. I don't know if we can switch this over. Nope, the other way. So this is our jelly exhibit. Um, so we have moon jellies, which are the ones we just saw. We have an egg yolk, egg yolk jelly, kind of like the eggs we eat at home. Does it kind of look like it? Yeah, I think so. Yummy. We don't want to touch it, though, or eat it. And then we have, doo, doo, doo. sorry friends, this camera is really funny to work with. We have the lion's mane jelly. Isn't that fun? Look at all those colors. Whoa, we see purples and yellows. And we also see their oral arms. So those are the arms that they used to eat with. And then they have the tentacles and the bell. Really cool. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, from our guest here, are these the same jellies we can see in, say, New Jersey? That's a great question. Are these the, the question from one of our guests here today is, are these the same jellies that we see in New Jersey? These jellies are native to Alaska. Um, they really like cold waters. And so New Jersey uh, is the Atlantic Ocean, which is a lot warmer than the Pacific Ocean. And so you would not see this these jellies out there. Great question, though. We don't have any other questions. No more questions? OK, friends. So if you do have questions later on, go ahead and email education at alaskasealife.org. Um, I want to say a big thank you to Alaska 529 for sponsoring this episode. I also want to say thank you to Leo and the staff, Holly and Alex, that are helping out today, and the moon jellies for helping us out today and giving you guys a great show. Look at how cool they are. How pretty. And stick around for story time. Today's story time is Plankton is Pushy. It's a fun one. I think you'll like it. <laughs> Plankton is Pushy by Jonathan Fenske. Why, hello, Mr. Muscle. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, Mr. Muscle's not saying hello back. Hmm. 
Plankton's a little confused why. I said, hello, Mr. Muscle. Hmm. Well, that is just rude. Let me tell you how this works. When I say hello, you say hello, hello, or hi, or what's up, plankton, or how's it going, etc., etc. Hmm. So let's say we give this another whirl, okay? Why, hello, Mr. Muscle. Oh no. Do you think he's gonna say hello back? Really? Nothing? <clears throat> Plankton looks frustrated. Perhaps I should slow it down just a wee bit. Hello there, Mr. Muscle. Tap, tap, tap. Plankton is tapping his little feet. Something, anything, please. Oh, Plankton wants a hello. Wait, what's this? Do you think he's gonna say hello? Ladies and gentlemen, the muscle speaks. Excuse me. You'll have to speak up. I can't hear you. Snap! <gasps> oh. Delicioso. Yummy. <gasps> Aha! I knew you could talk. The end.